Hello everyone, we are back with a new tutorial. For this tutorial, we are going to look into interior lighting with Redshift. I want to thank you all and to thank all the patrons that made this tutorial possible. We made 30 patrons this week, so thank you so much for all the support. And thank you all the subscribers that make this channel again. We go over a thousand the last week. We are going to start with the setup. What we do see here is the actual render. There's no post production and we are going to see how to make this lighting work. First, I want to change to the legacy viewport for you to see the actual lights. I'm going to start with the IPR rendering. I'm going to hide or the, the XCN carpet it's hiding. So you're going to see the actual render here. What I have over here is the way that we should light, let me show you over here, the actual interiors. For the environment light, we should not use a dome light. If we use a dome light here, Redshift lights dome light, you're going to add a lot of noise. So you shouldn't use dome lights. What you should use is you go for the render settings and under environment, you just, let me remove the old environment to create a new one. You just need to click on environment, create Redshift environment, and look for your textures. I'm going to use a texture from HDRI maps. That is this texture over here, HDRI maps 325. So this is the texture that we are going to use as a base for our render. Right now, let's see how the scene is set up. Let me pause the render for a second. You can see here that I have no lights at the moment, just the environment that is emitting by GI. So you need to be focused on the GI. And we have two planes. Each plane has the same background image. Let me show you the image. This is the image. And I'm using it on the same plane and I'm generating the render and that's what you see over here. So again, the environment light, the environment uh, node, it's giving me the information here. When you work with the environment, you need to put a little bit more force on the GI when you bring the information in. So let's go back once more and let's hide for the moment the actual environment so we have no lights now and i'm going to start with the room light no nope. the point center light with the point center light we are using a light type point if you want to know more about the redshift physical light all the lights that we are going to see here our Redshift physical light. You are going to need to go for my other tutorial. And we are adding some basic information for temp and we are making it a little bit warmer. And for the intensity multiplier, we set a really high value. When you're working with Redshift, you should work with real scale values, meaning that one unit size it's one centimeter, right? So if you go for 100 units, that's a meter. That's why the intensity should be high enough. So that's the first. The filler, we are using a point center to emit light on all angles. After that, let me hide the point light and we are going to see our next light that it's here it's the room light it's to fill the information and to send some information here into the light next we are going to show you the fill light the fill light it's going to be a light that we are going to simulate from here also i'm going to use this moment to share some thoughts Some people use this kind of setup where the actual 
box it's open. If you use that setup, you're going to remove a lot of contribution from the GI and you're going to let the GI goes out. You can see here, the information is different when you make the plane or when you have the plane in place. So when you're working with GI, you should use closed spaces for interiors if you are not going to use the space to fill the light. Now, let's go for the actual window. So I have three windows here, left window, right window, should be right light, and big light, big window. So we have three lights here. First, we have the left light that is going to show you this side over here, the right light, that is the light there, and the big window light. So I have three physical lights over here with basic configurations. I'm using radiant power here, but you can use anything that you want. And the intensity multiplier is 100. Now, we have the portals. For the portals, they are not going to work and they are not going to affect anything if I don't have an environment. So if I want contributions and I go and add a left light and the right light that should be adding some information here and the big window and the big portal, each light has its respective portal. What I'm going to have as a result, it's longer render times. If I don't have the actual environment, it's not going to work. So we don't have to use, we don't need to use the dome light and we don't have to use the dome light, but we need to add the environment to make the portal work. So big portal, big window, left light, right light. Let me hide this one so I have no lights. And let me add the portal again. So environment, create redshift portal. And we'll look for the scene. And you can see here that now we have contribution from our portals into the scene. So you need to add the actual configuration to make the portals work. Also, as you can see here, I'm using some ramps to generate the portal information. Why? Because if I don't use the ramps, let me go for the big portal here on the left to show you. Big portal here. If I remove my ramp, the light that comes from the portal, let me render, like final render, it's going to be too hard and it's going to be weird. So if I add the actual portal, let me show you the difference. And I've add the, the ramp here on the portal, the information for the light is going to be soft on the borders. So you can see here that all information without the ramp, it's looking like this, it's flat. And with the ramp, we have more information. So the ramp is going to affect the actual configuration. And what I'm having on the ramp, I'm using a tartan ramp. And on the right color, I'm using a one value, a value of one. And on the dark color, I'm using a 0 0.136 value. So this is what defines the actual portal and the work that makes the intensity to look more natural over the window. Now, it's time to add the lights again. So we have big window, right light, left light. Again, for each light, I'm using the same and the exact same ramp here. So I'm connecting the ramp to, let me change this one. I'm connecting the ramp to the intensity multiplier of the portal and I'm connecting the ramp to the intensity multiplier 
of the other one. For some of the lights, I'm using a different configuration. I'm using, depending on the intensity, on the right side of the darken ramp, I'm using a value of 8, and on the darker side, to make the gradient on the borders, I'm using a value of 8. Again, weird. We shouldn't be using a value of 8. Oh, a value of 10 and a value of 8. So on the right side, I'm using a value of 10. That will be the center of the ramp, right? This side. Let me show you. Because I have the ramp, the, tar the tartan here. So I'm using that one there. And a value of 8. And on the right side, I'm using a value of 10. Also, each light here has the configuration to be invisible. So I changed the lights to be not visible on each of them. That's because I need to see the transparency to be able to see behind the glass, that it's here, and to see the image that I have there. So we have the point center, we have the room light and the fill light. Actually, I have another light that it's the ramp, the lamp light that it's on the corner of the room. So let's render this guy for you to see how it's looking right now. Again, we have then the left lights, the portal light, and the big window light. We have a portal light on each light. And actually, I want to make something clear. Wait, that shouldn't be the one that I move. Let's go to the other camera. When you're working with portal lights, the portal light should be outside of the glass. And I'm putting the portal light it depends if you want the portal light to be uh, in front of behind the actual light here. It's not going to affect much, just the intensity. So the portal light should be behind the glass. And the environment, it's the one that takes the information for the portal light and takes the information to the actual image. Now, let me take the XN file and to show you the XN file. Let me find this one. So the rock carpet that you see here is actually just a XN file that it's rendering here. And the complete session, or just to be specific, when you work with Redshift, you don't use IPR rendering to get to the final image. What you should be using is a unified sampling. So here, let me hide this one. The configuration here is the max samples. And for a quick tip here, I'm not going to go into deep sampling. For that, you can check uh, Saul Spinoza sampling video, it's great. But mostly you can use the max samples to fix the oral sampling of the scene. If you go to 2256, you can go over if you have more noise to 512 or 1024 and so on and so on. Right now I'm using 226 and for the adaptive tre error threshold, I'm using not the default of 10, but moving to a lower number of 0 0.002. If you don't have time to make your actual uh, sampling, you can just take this number to a higher value and try to adjust and to take and to make it lower on the adaptive error threshold and you're going to have a free noise image. It's not going to be perfect on the sampling level, but it's going to be fixed. And if you're using the environment and the portal lights, you have to be sure to use the correct amount of brute force samplings or GI samples. When you work with brute with uh, portal lights and environment, you're taking the information and using the GI to light the scene. So you need more ray samples, ray numbers on the brute force and on the configuration. I'm using brute force and irradiance point cloud because it's really fast. And you should always use a number of GI bounces, five or more for uh, interiors. 
This is going to affect the overall lighting of the scene and the interiors have more GI bounces. That's the reason why I also took the plane and make a closer space to work on the environment. So that will be all. We have the lights on the windows, we have the environment outside, we have the portal lights, the center of the light that it's feeding and the overall light in here. Uh, we have a right light on the, on the dorm and everything is working right now. Let's render this guy. And also remember, you should be using a unified sample. Don't use IPR rendering. Redshift does not work with IPR rendering. If you force it to render here, you're not going to be able to use AOVs and that's not going to be or it's not how Redshift is meant to work. You should be using unified sampling and bucket rendering. If you're used to FStorm or Corona, you're going to work different there. But with Redshift, we work with buckets. So be sure to use them as they should. Also, as a quick tip here, if you are using a exposure photographic lens on your camera, if you're going to save AOVs, you should remove the actual uh, exposure photographic because with Redshift, you don't use it for the AOVs. The AOVs should be linear and the exposure photographic is a post effect. So it shouldn't be visible on the AUVs just on quick render or renders when you have one still or viewport renders. Also remember that we have a lot of tutorials on the Patreon channel right now. That will be all for the tutorials. Thank you so much for your support. Subscribe if you like the tutorial. Remember that we have some exclusive tutorials on Patreon if you want to support us there and you will be able to download this scene as one of this month rewards. So thank you so much and happy rendering.